Hey guys, Lucky here. So here's a breakdown of everything that was involved in putting this tunnel in my car. After making the tunnel over at the tech center with a little help from my friend, uh, tech center Kalen, I fit it to the car probably in and out eight or 10 times. I then used a Sharpie to, uh, a silver Sharpie to uh, trace the pattern all the way around the floor. I removed it and I cut about one inch in from the line all the way around. I then used a hammer and a dolly and I think some channel locks and some vice grips and a couple other tools I had laying around to bend the floor up at a 90 degree angle all the way around so that when I put the tunnel back in, it had something to attach to. I removed it one more time after fitting it. I used a uh, 3M half inch uh, belt sander, air belt sander, cleaned off all the material where I planned the weld. I then went and got that uh, pneumatic uh, hole punch from Harbor Freight. I punched, I don't know, 100 holes on each side at least. I uh, fit it one more time, made sure everything looked good, and uh, used tech screws to zip it all in, uh, about every five or six inches, and then I started collapsing it, pinching it together, and plug welding it all the way around. And this is the finished product. The only thing left to do is seam seal, raise the transmission, put the shifter back on. I'm going to build some more seat brackets. Other than that, this was done with a 110 welder on the ground in front of my shop. I didn't use the lift. I didn't use a plasma cutter. I didn't use anything special. A bunch of hand tools, some stuff I bought from Harbor Freight. I was lucky enough to use the brake over at the tech center. Thanks a lot, Kalen. But other than that, this is truly a do-it-yourself job. You could do this in your driveway. Um, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.